Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about the benefits of selenium for your thyroid gland. Now selenium is important for your entire body, don't get me wrong. However, it's very, very important for your thyroid gland. And the utilization of selenium in the form of supplementation and, and things like that can actually enhance your thyroid at several different levels. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist and I specialize in helping people with thyroid problems, hormone imbalances, and of course, helping people lose weight. So let's talk about our topic today, which, is, which would be selenium and the benefits that it has specific to your thyroid. So what I want you to understand here is we're going to go into these. We have six things here, okay? And these, and if you can't see the bottom of the board, I'll lift it up towards the end here. Um, but we have six things here, and I want to just explain how selenium is working in your body. So we're going to be talking about number one in just a second, but bear with me here. Now, we're not going to get too technical, but what is happening here is that your body has um, certain uh, proteins that selenium are a part of, okay? So selenium is a part of these proteins, and these proteins catalyze these reactions, uh, certain reactions in your body, which we'll get to in just a second. And if you don't have selenium, which is SE here, it will slow down the process by which these things occur. So selenium is very important in helping these things go forward. That's really why you should care about selenium. Okay, so with that in mind, let's talk about how it's actually functioning or, or how it's working for your thyroid. I think the number one most important thing is that selenium, along with just a handful of other important nutrients, by the way, so there are not many of these, helps convert T4 to T3. So I have the up arrow, meaning it increases the conversion of T4 to T3, which is the most important conversion for your thyroid because T3 is the hormone that you care about um, in, your, in your body, okay? Now, why this is important is because most people are taking T4 medication which means that that medication is not active. And selenium is involved in this process of taking T4 and converting it to the active thyroid hormone, which is what you want. Now, low levels of selenium make this process go slower, okay? So it still occurs, but it doesn't occur at the rate at which you need it to occur. Okay, so don't think that it's an on or off switch. It's not really like that. Think of it like a percentage. So if you have selenium deficiency, maybe this is running at 70%, but you can get it up to 100% or at least close to that, and that will improve how you feel because you're producing more T3. So probably the single most important thing that selenium is doing is helping this conversion process occur for your thyroid, by the way, for your thyroid. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is that it reduces, or at least has been shown, to reduce thyroid antibodies. So yes, that, you heard me correctly. It actually helps reduce thyroid peroxidase and thyroid globulin antibodies. Now, we actually have clinical studies and medical research which shows that this is occurring when people take selenium. Now, what you might hear or you know, what other doctors might say is that, well, yes, that does happen in some studies, but in other studies, it isn't universal. Okay, so some studies show that it helps and some show that it doesn't. But what I'm telling you is that doesn't really matter, okay? And here's why. Selenium is relatively safe, provided you use it in the right dose, which we'll talk about a little bit later here. So it's a relatively safe treatment and it has the potential to help. So even if it only helps, let's say 50%, I'm just making that number up. Let's say even if that was 40 or 30%, it's still worth it to try for a 20 or $30 supplement, which can potentially, and has been shown in certain people, to reduce their antibodies. Now, why isn't it working for everybody? Well, probably because each case of Hashimoto's is a little bit different, okay? So don't get hung up on the fact that some studies show it works and some show that it doesn't work. What you should care about is that there are some that shows that it does work for certain individuals and it's worth a shot because it's both safe and cost effective, okay? So yes, it can reduce thyroid antibodies um, by virtue of some of the mechanisms we'll talk about in just a second, which is number three. So the reason this is probably helping reduce your antibodies is because it's helping reduce thyroid inflammation. So when you take selenium, well, let's back up and say, when you have selenium deficiency, your thyroid has the potential to get damaged as a result of the production of um, a number of things, okay? So just producing thyroid hormone um, and having the potential for inflammation in the thyroid gland can cause damage to your thyroid cells. Now what selenium does, if present, is it helps produce things like glutathione, which are antioxidants, which are protective to your thyroid cells, okay? So we're gonna talk about total inflammation in a second, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about thyroid-specific inflammation. So you know if you have thyroid inflammation because your neck may feel swollen, it may feel hot or tender to the touch, um, it may be painful, it may feel strange when you swallow. So you probably know what I'm talking about if you have Hashimoto's. You'll probably feel that inflammation specific to the thyroid gland. Now selenium helps reduce that probably by, the, by increasing the amount of glutathione, which we'll talk about in just a second, but that's very another important thing. Number four is that it also helps reduce total inflammation. Okay, so we care about thyroid inflammation, of course, right? Um, but we also care about total inflammation because total inflammation reduces T4 to T3 conversion also. 
So selenium is helping increase T4 to T3 conversion in two separate ways. Number one is that selenium is involved in this process. And number two, if you can reduce inflammation, then you can also help indirectly increase T4 to T3 conversion. Now, again, the reason selenium is probably doing this is because number five, it helps your body produce something called glutathione, which is sometimes referred to as the master antioxidant. So glutathione is helping clean up the cells, preventing free radical damage, reducing inflammation in specific glands like your thyroid and in other cells in your body. And glutathione is incredibly important. You can actually take glutathione as a supplement, although it's not quite as effective. Um, that's another topic. But um, glutathione, if used correctly, can actually help reduce inflammation as well, which is helping all of these things. So you can kind of see how uh, selenium is tying together at multiple levels. And then I'm going to lift this up so you can see the bottom here. And that is that selenium also has antiviral properties. Why do we care about antiviral properties? Well, one of the main reasons would be that one of the main causes or triggers of the autoimmune disease Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a viral infection called EBV. So we know that there are certain infections, certain viruses, but also bacteria can do this, that when your body has them, they can actually trigger um, autoimmunity and inflammation in the body. So if you have something, if you're taking something which can fight that infection, because remember, if you get EBV, which is Epstein-Barr virus or infectious mononucleosis, that's why we call it mono for short, that stays around with you forever. And so it can, it's kind of opportunistic in that it comes up and out whenever you get sick. So if you get sick, um, the EBV virus will come out of your, well, it won't come out, but you'll start manifesting some of the symptoms related to mono. So you'll get these sort of recurrent bouts of, of specific symptoms. Now, what selenium is doing is it's probably helped killing that um, or, or suppressing that, that infection from getting too rampant. So if you can push it down and suppress it, um, because we know it's in your body for, well, it is for most of you, especially if you have Hashimoto's, it's probably also helping in that way. So selenium is helping one, two, three, four, five, six different ways specific to your thyroid, okay? We haven't even talked about the benefits that selenium has um, on other systems or other organs in your body, but these are at least six very important reasons and good reasons that you might wanna consider selenium supplementation. Now, if you're gonna use selenium, one of the most important things you should be aware of is your dose, okay? So yes, selenium is beneficial, but if you take too much of it, you can actually get a negative effect. So selenium is not one of those things where you can just take it and more is always better, okay? In fact, um, having too little is just as bad as having too much. And so you can kind of think of it on that way. Well, you can't see that drawing, but that's basically, I'm just explaining what I was saying there. Um, you need to have the right amount. Now, in my opinion, based off of my experience in treating a lot of people, I think that that dose is somewhere between 75 and 150 micrograms per day. Okay, so that's per day. Now, I've included that dose in many of my supplements because as you may or may not know, I create supplements specific for the thyroid, and that's the dose that I recommend, and I have that dose in my supplements. Um, if you don't wanna use those, that's fine. You can find it elsewhere, but make sure that you're finding it in that dose. Too high level or taking too much selenium can actually cause, like I said, problems here. So it can actually, instead of reducing inflammation, can cause inflammation. Another common cause of excess selenium is hair loss. So hypothyroidism, meaning your thyroid is too low, which can happen if your T3 is too low, can cause hair loss. And so you might think to yourself, well, if I take selenium, it will help increase my T3 levels which is potentially true, but if you use too much, then it might actually drop those T3 and cause hair loss as well. So you have to really pay attention to the dose that you're using. Now, in the past, I used to recommend higher doses, somewhere between 200 and 400 micrograms. I've since retracted that and lowered it down just a bit because I think it's safer to go less, and you really don't need a ton of selenium to work. Okay, so I want you to be very careful. If, you, if you've seen this, this uh, um, if you've considered taking selenium, make sure you're using the right dose. And if you've used selenium in the past, by the way, and you've used one of those higher doses like in the 400 microgram range or even higher, I've seen some people take higher, um, you might wanna reevaluate the use of it and consider a smaller dose. So I want you to leave a comment if you've used selenium, just give your experience below because I know, again, probably many of you who are savvy about your thyroid know of the benefits of selenium. You may not know how or why it's working, but you know it is beneficial. So that's the, that's the takeaway I want you to get here. So just know that it is beneficial to your thyroid. But if you've been using it, leave your comment, leave your experience below so you can share it with other people so they can see just how effective it is. Also, if you haven't already, make sure that you download my free um, thyroid resources. I have a whole list of PDF resources which are completely downloadable and free. I'll have a link to that below. Tons of information that you can use. And if you found this information helpful, I think you'll really like that information. So that's all I have for you today. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.